Good morning, guys. Um, welcome to our subject, Philippine Popular Culture GE6108. So starting from now, moving forward, I, uh, Mr. Dan J. Jose, Sir Danj, would be your new OLC for this subject. Um, let's call it um, Philippine Pop Culture. So some OLC students are uh, addressing the subject, something like that. So it's kind of cool, right? Okay, so um, for this week, um, this is week eight, right? So our, um, the topic that would be in charge for this week would be um, Philippine literature. Okay, so um, let me let uh, let me uh, formally start our discussion. So um, as you can see, this would be the this would be the coverage of our discussion for this entire week, which is week eight, Philippine literature. So um, before anything else, uh, guys, um, let us define first the term itself, literature. Literature is the written work of a specific culture, subculture, religion, philosophy, or the culture, of other indigenous or ethnic groups okay and sometimes um, um literature is considered as this uh, philosophy or the study of such written work which may appear in poetry or in prose and um, prose simply means some um, ordinary language so literature simply means uh, literature can be seen in a written form or as well as in verbal form. So uh, I would be uh, providing you some sort of heads up, guys, that um, Philippine literature is divided into two. First one would be the verbal, and second would be the written form of literature. So most likely, guys, we can, um, we can see, uh, we can realize rather that um, um, those verbal literature exist before the arrival of the Spaniards. So, meaning to say, um, oral or verbal literature exists during pre-colonial period or era in our country. Okay. So, and our scope for this lesson would be from pre-history or pre-colonial, most likely. Um, and uh, that would uh, that would do up to the present or contemporary times okay so um we're going to have a brief background of each those periods so um if um you're going to find it uh, some sort of boring you don't need to worry i'll make it some sort of um, interesting so that you can enjoy our subject okay so uh next presentation Okay, so uh, let me um, elaborate this one, guys. Um, the literature of our country are fully based from the events of our history. So, meaning to say, guys, that um, we can um, have literature in each influence that we receive from other race who visited our country. So, I just wanted to uh, reiterate this one. So, um, influence from other races um, corresponds the type or classification of literature that we have in our country so what do we mean by that so first um if i'm not mistaken guys um first um, migrant to our country would be the aitas second would be the indonesians from indonesia of course the Malays from the uh, mainland of Malaya, but today it is known as Malaysia. And next would be, of course, the Spaniards. They conquered our um, country for about 333 years from 1521 up to 1898. So most likely the Spaniards has the most, the most, um, um, high level or degree of influence when it comes to our culture particularly with our literature okay so um second would next would be the americans so as uh, we can remember after uh, the spaniards left our country the next colonizer would be the americans right 
So of course, so for almost um, 30 years, the Americans highly influenced our country, most likely, of course, with our given literature. So um, I just wanted to uh, give, uh, give um, some sort of uh, emphasis on this. Um, the Spaniards, the great influence of uh, their um, them colonizing our country is in terms of secularization, secular, or in terms of religion. And second would be for the uh, propagandism or as well as for reformism. Okay, that would be uh, that would be the two uh, that would be the two um, influences of the Spaniards in our country. Next would be the Americans. They highly focus the modernization of the Filipino culture and as well as they give more emphasis when it comes to education. Okay, so um, but uh, if you are going to notice uh, when it comes to the um, when it comes to the um, influence of Japan, um, I double checked the module, but it has not uh, included uh, the um, influence of Japanese uh, Japanese uh, people in our country simply because uh, Japanese um, only came um, uh, they conquered only our country for not. Um, more than three years, and then they um, they left um, immediately in our country. So, um, what I think is that um, the most uh, the influence that we can consider that the Japanese uh, contributed in our country would be the haiku and as well as with the kanaga. But it is not um, it is not um, actually uh, being um, uh, being uh, realized with the Filipinos because they stayed only for not. Uh, for not uh, more than or reaching three years, so that would be it. Okay. So um, okay, and then um, as well as um, um, it is said also, guys, that um, that um, the history began in our country in 1521 when the Spaniards arrived or came in our country. But it doesn't mean, guys, that the literature emerged, started only in Spanish era, but even in pre-colonial period. So what do you mean by that? So, of course, um, the civilization um, flourished and um, actually um, emerged with uh, European, uh, European countries, or we can call them Western countries, rather. So um, we, uh, what, we can, uh, what we can consider is that um, the civilizations around the world started from the Europeans. So whenever, wherever they go, um, whenever and wherever would be the territory that they're going, that they're going to a conquer or to colonize rather, that would be the time that the history will only start after conquering that particular country. Same thing happened in the Philippines. But it doesn't mean like what I have said a while ago, guys, it doesn't mean that the, uh, the Spaniards um, came in our country, most likely March 15, 1521, the history of the Philippines started in 1521, okay? It, does, um, it doesn't mean that um, they discovered us or they colonized us. The history, the whole, the entirety of the history of the Philippines will start in 1521, it's a big no. Simply because we do have Spanish period, American period, Japanese period, but um, the history started in our country in pre-colonial era or pre-colonial period. So we can um, we can call that also as uh, Baranganic era, where in our country for about 7,107 islands and islands are actually um, composed of different and distinct barangays headed by the Datu, Raja, Sultan, or Lakang. Okay, so um, as we, um, um, as we uh, proceed, guys, um, it is true, guys, that uh, because we are being colonized, rather, um, there is a great influence to our culture, particularly our literature, okay? This is why 
many art artists today are um, trying to redress this uh, situation to advocate our customs and traditions, specifically our verbal literature. So, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, I've um, I've uh, mentioned this also a while ago that um, because uh, we are being colonized by uh, Japanese Americans and as well as with the Spaniards, so um, part of our history has been um, transformed into Spanish American and most likely Japanese rather. But uh, to tell you honestly, guys, um, I hope guys, uh, you uh, you heard already uh, you heard already uh, this quote or this um, this uh, phrase that ang mga Pilipino ay dayuhan sa mismong bansa nila. So what do we mean by that? So in the first place, no one is um, so sure until now that um, Filipino really exist in this um, archipelago of the Philippines in the first place, simply because if we're going to study with the um, uh, with the land bridge theory and as well as with the migration theory rather so um the first inhabitants are the aitas they came from the continent of africa so in the first place there is no filipino inhabited in the first place in our country second would be the indonesian second a third would be the malays next would be the chinese the indians the arabians and as well as the spaniards americans and the japanese people so mean to say, when it comes to our culture, we are being, um, uh, what, what do you call this? So, okay, so our culture is identified or classified as cultural hybridization, or we are being hybrid, or we are being blended with different sorts of culture. So when it comes to um, our topic literature, so meaning to say literature is a part of culture, so meaning to say our literature is being blended with different civilization or culture from other um, races around the globe. Okay, so um, okay, so and as well as um, this advocacy um, started in 1960s and 1970s, when it comes to the um, um trying to uh, redress the this inequity uh inequity by the by the artists uh, during those years 1960s and 70s that they are trying to revive somehow those verbal or oral um literature so that we can uh, partially um partially um erase some sort of influences from um other races just like spaniards and as well as americans in our country so they are um, advocating or they are strongly uh, promoting uh, the Filipino literature as well as Filipino culture. Okay, so I think um, um, this uh, that uh, that would be it for our introduction for our um, topic for today, Philippine literature. So um, next, okay, so we are going to for um, start um, formally our um, our discussion. So first, guys, uh, the pre-colonial inhabitants of our islands show a rich past through their folk uh, speeches, folk songs, folk narratives, and indigenous rituals and mimetic dances. So guys, so once uh, we call the term mimetic, it simply means that repetitive. And then they are trying to mimic or they are trying to copy something. So if I'm not mistaken, guys, so most of the films um most of the films and most of the books that i have read previously in the um uh, previous years of my teaching so mostly for this uh, mimetic dances they are copying uh birds they are copying um some sort of special actions of those animals around uh, that surrounds them so most likely they're copying uh, uh pigs they are copying birds they are copying dogs and cats and uh, they are um, copying that and uh, they're applying that in uh, what we call mimetic dances so that um, they are strongly believing that once they do that, um, once they perform mimetic dances, they are praising the gods or the deities in our nature. Okay, some of, um, some of, that, um, some of those beliefs are being applied also in our um oral or verbal literature so actually guys we do have also um 
we do have also one gestures of being applied in our literature as simple as um before the arrival of the spaniards um system of writing is not yet invented but we do have the first um the very first system of writing which is the by Bayan, but it is um lately invented but not all inhabitants of uh, the philippine um, archipelago are being aware of that okay so some of the literatures are not being written but as well as being danced uh being applied to some sort of gestures or is either oral or verbally okay um the most important of these folk speeches is the rhythm of the Tigmo in Cebuano, Bugtong in Tagalog, Pagtakom in Ilongo, and Patotodon in Bicol. The Talinghaga or metaphor is central to riddle as it reveals subtle parallels between two unlike objects and bring one's power of perception and humor to the test. So um, as we all know, guys, um, uh, 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 for me, guys, I do really love uh, talinghaga or metaphors simply because uh, the meaning, the true meaning is being hidden in all of those uh, things that are being used as, as symbolisms in, um, in quoting something. So, for example, um, Dumaan si negro patay lahat ng tao. So, what do you mean by that? So negro simply means in Spanish black. Um, the way negro uh, passes passes the road, passes the bridge, passes the community. All of those people are being uh, being dead. So it it does not mean that literally they are being dead. They are being slept only. So meaning to say negro stands or symbolizes the night, and then uh, the death of the people when the negro passes by uh, simply means they are being, uh, they're actually, they're only sleeping. You don't need to worry. So meaning to say, dumaan si negro, patay lahat ng tao, it simply means that when it comes to, uh, when the night um, actually um, approaches in our daily life, it simply means that it's about time to take rest or it's about time to take a nap or take a sleep. Okay, but um, as I shared a while ago, so I'm um, I'm a um, former customer, uh, customer service representative. So our world is um, actually crumbled into upside down. Okay, so uh, we are sleeping in the night and we work during nights, night shift, graveyard to be exact. Okay, so that is something. Um, uh, my body clock is actually ruined because of that. Okay, so next would be uh, we're still in uh, pre-colonial times. Guys, so uh, proverbs or aphorisms express norms or code of conduct, community beliefs or values by offering nuggets or wisdom in a short rhyming verse. So um, the extended form, the tanaga, the mono rhyming heptasyllabic quatrain, which expresses insights and lessons about life. So it's more emotionally charged the treacherous proverb and thus has an affinity with folk lyrics so guys i just want to reiterate something on this i just want to um give an emphasis so when it comes to code of conduct filipinos usually uh, we are actually bounded by what we call norms so um as you can um, learn from the previous olc or as well as in during in senior high school or as well as in high school so norms are social products that became that became um social standards that those people li uh, living in the society should abide should obey should follow that standard if not if those people did not be able to um to follow or obey those norms they would be either persecuted or they would be subject for any sort of social control so what do you mean by that so for example um some sort of values that um that uh, we do of our in in our uh, culture like for the uh, pakikisama pakikisama is one of the great values of the filipinos so pakikisama is um, um some sort of um, form of socialization wherein where 
uh, whenever that um, your neighbor needs your help, you are expect the society is expecting you to give um, extensive help coming from you. So that is pakikisama. So the pakikisama together with all of those um, all of those um, um, customs or traditions are being uh, being inserted in aphorisms or proverbs. Okay. Next, folk song is a form of folk lyric that expresses hopes and aspirations, people's lifestyles, as well as their loves, as in children's songs or Ida Ida in Maguindanao, Tulang Pambata in Tagalog in southern part of most likely in um, most likely in uh, southern uh, part of Luzon in um, Batangas, in um, Quezon, in Aurora, in Cavite, most likely. They are um, uh, practicing tulang pambata. Or canciones para abing in uh, northern part of the Luzon, in Ibanag, most likely in uh, northern part of Cagayan, and as well as in Batanes. These are frequently repetitive and sonorous, didactic, and naive. Okay? Other folk songs are the drinking song, Sung during the carousel, such as the Tagay, Cebuano, and Waray. So now we know. Now we already know where the term Tagay came from. It came from the Visayas, most uh, to be exact, in the province of Cebu, and as well as with the ethnic group of Waray. So it simply means Tagay, Walwal. Okay? That's um, just the very meaning of that. Okay? So next. Uh, we're still in the pre-colonial time, guys. So um, our country's ethics are considered ethno-ethics, uh, meaning uh, simply because our ethics are not national. Uh, we are pertaining, guys, with not national, with all of those, um, all of those uh, oral or verbal literature. Okay, not national because they are histories of diverse groups that consider themselves nations. So. Consider them themselves nations simply because um, long, long, long time ago there is Philippines, but there, but that Philippines is not Philippines simply because there is no unity, there is no country of Philippines, but there is a place what we call Philippines, and that Philippines is subdivided or divided into thousands of barangays. So they consider themselves as nations. Okay, so for example, of those. Um, the Guman uh, from the Subanon, the Rangen from the Maranao, from the uh, Mindanao, Hudhud from the Ifugao, and Ulahingan from Manobo. Such epics revolves around supernatural events or heroic actions and reflect or affirm a community's values and traditions and ideals as well. These are sung or chanted accompanying indigenous musical instruments and dances performed by chanters during harvest marriages or funerals so like what i have said so most likely guys um uh we can uh therefore conclude that some of the literatures uh, before the arrival of the spaniards um are being um, used for the praising the deities for uh for giving them harmony for giving them um peace or peace of mind rather uh gives them um protection to other barangay that might conquer their barangay for the good harvest so that uh, they can harvest more and more um is either uh, fruits or vegetables rather for the uh, blessings in the marriages and as well as for the afterlife Okay, some of the gestures literatures are being used for that. Okay, so um, next examples, Lamang, or uh, what we call Biag ni Lamang in Ilocanos, in uh, Hinilawud for Sulod, Kudaman in the province of Palawan, Darangin from Maranao, and Ulahingan from Libunganin, Arumanin, Manobo. Okay. So those are examples of um, epics that are being used for uh, for the uh, people that are residing in one particular barangay for them to have good harvest, blessings in their uh, blessings in their marriages, and as well as for the blessings in the afterlife.
Okay, so here we go with the Spanish colonial tradition. So religion and institutions that serve European culture enrich the languages of the lowlands, introduced theater, which we would come to know as comedia, cinaculo, sarsuela, playlets, and drama. So most likely, guys, uh, what we have, uh, what we should notice on this slide. So uh, what, just like uh, what I have noticed a while ago, Spanish colonial traditions or influence rather, um, mostly, um, mostly tackles religion. All of those um, I have uh, that we are seeing in the first uh, first bullet, comedia, sinagulo, sarsuela, playlist and drama are those um, religious actually are uh, religious um, uh, being applied by religious beliefs by the Roman Catholic Church brought by the Spaniards in our country. Early catechism included religious songs penned by Ladino poets or those versed in both Spanish and Tagalog and were used to teach the Spanish language to Filipinos. The salamat ng walang hangga or gracias de sin sempiternas and ending thanks by Fernando Bagun Bata is a fine example contained in the Memorial de la Vida Cristiana en Lengua Tagala, published in 1605. One type of religious relics are the med uh, meditative verses such as the Dalit appended, the catechisms, and novenas. Okay, so all of us are actually aware what novena is. Okay, but among the religious poetry of the day, it is the passion in um, opto syllabic quintillas that has been etched in the commemoration of Christ's suffering and resurrection at the Calvary by the Philippines. So guys, all of us are being aware of this. So actually guys, I'm not a, um, I'm not a Catholic, but I'm, I am fully aware of uh, this, um, what we call um, passion. So some provi uh, province are, provinces are calling this as pabasa. So uh, most likely during um, 2010 up to 2015. So uh, I'm spending my uh, my Holy Week in uh, with my uh, high school friends in Bulacan in um, San Rafael Bulacan. So at the early morning, I'm um, I'm uh, they are um, 5 a.m. If I'm not mistaken, so they are uh, setting up their uh, the their sound system, the microphones, the uh, gigantic. Um, gigantic speakers at the middle of the basketball court and then no one is allowed to uh, to butt in during the uh, during the time where the uh, the men of the church is um, initiating the pabasa or the uh, the passion okay so yes um at somehow in the metro manila or in the national capital region it is not uh, quite um, observed recently but as um, you can visit your provinces, I'm absolutely sure they are um, strongly and still um, observing the passion or pabasa. Okay, another example, the Ang Mahal na Passion ni Yesu Christong Panginoon natin na tola, Holy Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ in verse by Gaspar Aquino de Belen, published in 1704, is the earliest known passion in the world. Throughout the Lenten season, other known passions are in Ilocano, Pangasinan, Ibanag, Cebuano, Bicol, Ilongo, and Waray. Secular, this is the term that um, I have, what I have mentioned a while ago, secular means Filipino clergy, or it is something that is uh, related, relevant to religion, uh, Philippine, Catholic, uh, Philippine Catholic Church. Secular place have emerged amid social and economic transitions, the rise of an opulent class and the middle class that could take advantage of a European education. The most popular secular songs followed a romantic traditions conventions, the languishing yet devoted lover. The metrical romance, Awit and Purido, in Tagalog is another popular secular poetry. The Awit is set in um, dodecasyllabic uh, quastrains and in octosyllabic uh, quastrains. 
the corrido is set in. There, there are vivid tales of cavalry made for singing and chanting from European successors such as Gonzalo de Cordoba and Ibong Adarna. So actually, guys, Ibong Adarna is highly influenced by the Spaniards, but it is being it is being uh, originated in our country. So guys, I just wanted to um, add. So in, if you are playing a uh, mobile legend, so the Ibong Adarna, um, the concept of that has highly influenced the hero Parsa. Um, FYI. The Avitas of prominent poetic genre reached new heights in Balagtas Francisco Baltasar in his celebrated work, Florante at Laura. It is being discussed in our Filipino subjects way back in second year, if I'm not mistaken, second year high school, uh, the most famous of metric romances in the world. Once in 19th century, so it is one one of the most important um, events, significant events rather in our Philippine history, wherein uh, the 19th century is considered as the age of enlightenment, whereas a um, couple of Filipinos, what we call the illustrados, started to think and uh, to write uh, for them to gain um, changes, so because um, they are um, even called as propagandists or reformists, so they are trying to change. They are, uh, they are trying to write literature or any other speeches, essays, and so on for them to promote and for them to enlighten the Spaniards who are actually residing in our country for them to have change. So some of them are assimilation of the Philippines as a regular province of Spain, equality between Filipinos and as well as the Spaniards, secularization of the Filipino parishes. So they use their uh, talents for and skills as well for writing for them to promote equality between Spaniards and Filipinos. So such as um, Jose Rizal, our national hero, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Emilio Jacinto, Mariano Ponce, and as well as uh, Andres Bonifacio, considered as the father or supremo founder of Kataas Taasang Kakalang Galangang Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan. So um, actually, Andres Bonifacio is um, being uh, only um, influenced by the Dr. Rizal, simply because Andres Bonifacio became a part of La Liga Pilipina uh, when uh, Dr. Rizal um, um, came in with the Philippines for the second exploration with in the in the continent of Europe. This led to the emergence of the propaganda movement where prose works such as political essays and two political novels, Noli Metangere, Wag Mo Kong Salangin, and as well as El Filibusterismo, um, provide or help us for um, for the enlightenment or for the um, for the emotion or for the love of country or what we call it simply nationalism. Yet, if the novels of Rizal are political, Pedro Paterno's novel Ninay in 1885 is primarily uh, cultural and is considered the first Filipino book, while Paterno's Ninay gave impetus to more writing in Spanish to other novelists such as uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus Balmori and Antonio M. Abad did not flourish. Okay, so um, actually uh, Pedro Paterno um, served as a senator, but also uh, he's not just a um, regular um, law uh, lawmaker or senator. He's not just an illegal, uh, regular uh, lawyer, but also he is a uh, literatist or a writer as well. Still American uh, colonial period, American influence, uh, okay, so next part, uh, we're in the second part. American influence was profoundly rooted in the firm establishment of English as the medium of instruction in all schools and literary modernism that emphasized the individuality of the writer and cultivated artisanal culture, often at the expense of social conscience. So um, I hope, guys, you can see recall of what I've mentioned a while ago. Is that um, for this one, um, the United States uh, focused on the um, education, but um, they pro uh, they strongly promoted English for the medium of instruction. So they are trying to obliterate um, the culture that is being influenced by 
the Spaniards. So, and then as well as for the um, individuality, or uh, if you have the subject of um, understanding the self, so it simply means individualism. So equality among all people and as well as believing in their selves for their capabilities or potentialities as well. Okay. So um, for this one, uh, something relevant to the America, American colonial era or period as well, the author and later the national artist for literature, Jose Garcia Villa, um, used a free verse and adopted the dictum art for the sake of art to the change of other authors who were more concerned with the utilitarian dimension of literature. Another poetry maverick who used the free verse and talked to her uh, talk in her poetry about unlawful love was Angela Manal and Gloria, a woman uh, poet who described her time ahead. So um, given the new the, uh, dispensions, danger of censorship, more authors turned of seditious place and popular writing in the native languages flourished through the weekly outlets, including Leeway and Bisaya. Guys, Americans are implementing a more advanced or more um, modern version of education. And as well as they are promoting the universal language, which is the English. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to the um, management of the Americans in our country, way back from the very first, um, from the very first, uh, first uh, Philippine Commission coming from the American, which is a, uh, um, established the military government um, in our country during that time. Um, they promoted education. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, everyone is actually welcome in entering the school, whether you are rich or poor. There's nothing wrong with that. You should use English. You are not allowed to write any form of literature, any form of um, poems, any form of essays, speeches in vernacular languages or in Filipino. You should, you are allowed only to, you, uh, to write all of those using the English language. Okay, so that is the, um, that is the general uh, rule of law of the Americans um, during, um, during military government um, as by virtue of first Philippine Commission in our country. Um, uh, tradition of Balagtas continued until poet Alejandro Abadilla promoted literary modernism. Later, Abadilla inspired young poets who wrote modern verses such as Virgilio Almario, Pedro Ricarte, Rolando Tino in the 1960s. So highly um, influenced uh, those artists by the American culture. The Missing Stars, published by Paz Marquez Benitez in 1925, was the first popular short story written by a Filipino in English. Later, the short story demonstrated outstanding skills to Arturo Rotor and Manuel Arguilla. In addition to this growth, writers in the provinces continue to write in the vernacular. So it is um, actually um, um, highly prohibited by the Americans, but still they love their vernacular language. So they write uh, literary works on their um, vernacular languages. So those such as uh, Lope, K. Santos, Valeriano Hernandez, Peña, and Patricio Mariano wrote brief narratives that mirrored the early Tagalog short fiction called The Dali or Pasingao in the novels of Lope, K. Santos, and Faustino Aguilar, among others, P. Boque Cosa also penned Ang Palad ni Pepe, after Charles Dickens, David Copperfield, even as the realistic tradition had been kept alive. So in the period of uh, the Philippines where we are, we are being a colonist by the Americans, there is a strong clash between uh, the literary works of the vernaculars and as well as with the literary works from the um, highly influenced by the Americans. So that's exactly what happened in our country way back um, during American colonial era or period in our country. Ignacio Malapas, Leopoldo Yabes, and uh, Ivy Maliari 
were among those who wrote critics established during the American, yet it was the critic of Salvador P. Lopez that caught attention when he received the 1940 Commonwealth Literary Award for his literature and culture for the essay. This essay suggested that literature must have substance and that Vila's adherence to art for art's sake is decadent. So guys, um, we have no choice when it comes to this simply because um, we are being colonized by the Americans. So meaning to say the qualifications or the standards that should be applied would be the standards or qualifications by the Americans. So um, we should not blame. Um, we should not blame all of those people who won the um, the awards and the Commonwealth Literary Awards just because um, they are pro-Americans, but they are just simply yeah, uh, they are just simply um, following or obeying the rules of the Americans. So if they not be able to follow all of those rules and um, orders from the Americans, they might be executed. So um, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, Filipinos are also um, known for being good English speakers. So there's nothing wrong with that, if I would be the one uh, to be asked. For the uh, modern times or contemporary um, era, the, flower, the flowering of the uh, Philippine literature in the different languages particularly continues with the introduction of new publications after the years of martial law and the revival of dedicated literature in the 1960s and 1970s. Filipino authors continued to write poetry, short stories, novels, and essays whether they are socially committed, linked to gender, ethnics, or personal purpose. Of course, guys, um, with the proliferation of writings, workshops here and abroad, and the bulk of literature accessible to him through the mass media, including the internet, the Filipino writer has become more conscious of his craft. The numerous literary awards, such as the Don Carlos Palanca Memorial Awards for Literature, the Free Press of the Philippines, the Free Graphic Home Life and Panorama Literary Awards inspired him to contend with his peers and hope that his artistic works will be recognized in the long term. And that would be the end of our discussion.